Welcome to episode 115 of Let's Talk Geek, recorded on Wednesday, 21 November 2012. In the show, we change everything, but the mascot stays. We also look at the awesomeness of the domain name system, and we fly through the Milky Way right from in your browser. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the show. In the show with me today, we've got Gareth Vermeulen. Good evening. We've got Tim Hawk. Greetings. We've got Johan Els. Welcome back, Woo! sir. Oh, thank Long you. time no see. Thank you. Welcome. And Welcome. I'm Jan Vermeulen. And without any further ado, we have a random for the week. And that is that Meerkat is part of the Square Kilometer Array radio telescope and will be the largest and most sensitive radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere until the SKA is completed around 2024. Through Meerkat, South Africa is playing a key role in design and technology developments for the SKA. When it's finished, Meerkat will have almost two union, that's important, not league, rugby fields worth of collecting area at 18,000 square meters with 2,000 square meters built as of July 2012. The How reason, do you get to that? It, yeah, uh, naturally, XKCD 115. Ah. And there is a, a picture of a Meerkat for those watching the audio stream. And somebody in the background saying, you have to admit, there's no rule on, in the book saying a meerkat can't play rugby. <laughs> so so how many rugby fields in a meerkat? In a meerkat. Yes. And Which I've depends how many uh, almost can dance in a pit. Yeah. And so if you're looking at collecting area, not geographic area. True. Geographic area, yes. meerkat's going to be massive. Yes. <laughs> More than two rugby fields, I guarantee that. That's why we put it where it is. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why you put it there. You put it there because of radio silence. Radio yes, quiet. No, no, no. No. Because there's but, nothing but, else out there. But if, it's, but no if it else. is something the Karoo has, it's lack of radio signals in space. Okay. <laughs> no, but you also saw the square uh, kilometer. It's actually going to go extend all the way up into Africa and eventually some. Uh, what's the island out? Mauritius, Madagascar. So, well, there's going to be one in Mauritius. Madagascar it's, as it's, well. It, you know what I mean? So, so specific, you know, space is not. The biggest issue. Yeah, yeah. Square kilometer yeah. also refers to the collecting area. I learned this we, weekend. We, we've been told to move yes. on. Yes. So, um, so uh, talking about this weekend, we have events coming up. So, first up, I'd like to give a big shout out to House for Hack, where the show is being recorded and streamed from. And House for Hack is a hacker space where you as a geek can come and hack on things, whatever you want. They've got you know, MakerBots and all kinds of stuff. If you want to do 3D printing, you can come and hack on Android. There, there's lots of Android devs around, amongst other things. I mean, you can just come and check it out, see what the guys are working on. Some aquaponics stuff is always fun. And in Centurion, they meet on Tuesdays and Saturdays, Tuesday evenings, 6 to 9, Saturdays, 9 to 6 all day. And uh, Wednesdays, there's a meet in Randburg from 6 to 9. You can check it all out on houseforhack.co.za. Then we have tax returns that have to be in this Friday, unless you're a provisional e-filer, in which case, you can file the 31st of January 2013. Brick Fair at Irene Mall this coming weekend. I don't know if anybody wanted to say oh a little bit more of that. Yes. Uh, yes. That's where uh, Le Lego enthusiasts will exhibit their creations. Yeah. and it's I was there last year. Same. And I can tell you. Took some photos. I'll, I'll yeah. go check on my G Plus again and reshare it publicly. No, um, you can check on my blog. It's all there. Johan has a ton of photos too. They had some really cool stuff Blo there. Blog.who dash else. No, no, no. Who dash else. Okay, great. All right, so you can have a look there. Then Very a, important. Yes, a milestone Very and indeed the sign of the end times. Not sign of the end times, man. No, no, no. This he, is the end. This is going doomsday. away to get the, exa, the outer, skillet, outer body replaced. So, you know, comes okay. back as a he's a robot. <laughs> you know, they say his toupee is going to stay uh, uh, behind as an advisor. It, like a mimer. <laughs> Rian Kreivachen <laughs> is doing his last news broadcast and on the 26th of November. South Africa. I think we might pick it outside the SABC studios. <laughs> we might be dressed in signs and, in, and toupees uh, in honor of <laughs> Mr. Kreivachen. Yeah. And, uh, and for more events, you can check out stardates.co.za where we'll hopefully post up more things. Uh, I'm going to poke at Johan until he puts up the House for Hack meeting times there. Uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, lots of stuff in there. For instance, something we haven't mentioned, which you can find on Stardates, is movies opening, a.k.a. Skyfall. And uh, that ought to be good. Well, I was hoping we'll have another show next week because then we could say that Friday. <laughs> yes. So, 
that James Bond. You can, if you want to get in touch with us during the show, uh, we've got an IRC channel going, irc.ltnet.tv. If you've got a you've got proper IRC client, you can use that URL, plug in the port, standard port 6667, and we're in hash LTNet. Join us. You can tweet at us, but we're not going to see that until after the show. Uh, I don't think anybody's running tweet deck at the moment so um but you're welcome to tweet at us you're welcome to email us to get in contact with us and and we'll pull that stuff up for future shows we're going for a different show format uh far more interactive we want to actually address questions that you pelt at us we've had a couple already and uh, that we'll start looking into uh, for example one that came in was recovery software yes. so first we have to decide how we're going to tackle that question well, what type of recovery we want to address I can tell you what the best recovery software is yes backups <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything that's a, that's a file not on the not on the system that was lost <laughs> in a hard drive locked away somewhere. That is the best recovery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Follow us on Twitter. Let's talk Geek G Plus. Let's talk Network or our YouTube channel and Facebook. If you're just joining us, this is the Quick Geek. How the Quick Geek works is we have a bunch of news stories. We have one minute to discuss them in, and the mixer will hold us to that. There will be points scored either during or after the show, and we might announce it in the next show only. And it works a lot like Whose Line Is It Anyway and QI, where there are lots of points, but they don't matter. Much like what the DOC says. <laughs> so, yes. <coughs> Topic number one. Broadband NSA let down by the private sector, says DOC advisor Roy Kruger. <coughs> Yes, so, <laughs> so if, if that's not right. obvious, Roy Kruger works for the public sector, <laughs> the Department of Communications, and uh, we were sitting at an event in Johannesburg where the Metro Ethernet Forum were, were meeting and, uh, and having a press briefing, and Roy Kruger um, was essentially saying that the private sector has had 18 years to service a rural South Africa with broadband, and they have not done it. They have done nothing. And he says that it's easy to say that they have provided 110% mobile coverage, but that's 2G and uh, not broadband just yet needs to be 3G. And so um, I challenged him a little bit and said, okay, so, uh, you know, government's track record hasn't been that great in rolling out broadband in South Africa. So why not let the private sector do this? And the private sector have said that they're keen to help you on a wholesale basis. And, uh, and so that was his answer is Five. that... They've had Four, eighteen. They've had eighteen three, years, and they've done nothing. Two. <laughs> There's no comments. One. It's fine. Cool. Cool. Yeah. New .za domains on the way. So. But they've been saying this uh, forever. So now yeah. what? What we've got now? We've got a, a new .za central registry. A, a, a what you're seeing on screen, if you're watching the uh, video, is Uniforum and the Zadna signing an agreement to form the ZA Central Registry, which will administer .coza, .org.za, and will add, eventually, .web.za and .net.za. And then they'll also administer other top-level domains that, that are coming down the way, .africa, .joburg, .durban, .cape Town. Meh. Really? <laughs> not that interested in okay, these domains. you're going to get a web. No. <laughs> Why not? It's, it's so exciting. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I'm going to keep on with .zera, .zera. So I hope they keep it as simple as it is now. Because it's still, for me, the easiest thing to register. Yeah. Um, they, they are talking about newer systems. Uh, I do also, uh, like a lot of folks, like the old text-based system. Uh, you know, you send them yeah. a good old text file to register the thing. They've also said that they've reduced the cost. So the cost Ten. price to people. Um, is reduced. Okay. SMS pricing, MTN, Vodacom hit back at cell C. This is interesting. There, this is actually a very deep topic, which we may want to devote some time to at a later stage. But cell C essentially said that they are breaking the gentleman's agreement between operators for A2P messaging, which is a, you know, basically what the guys use to push advertising bulk, at bulk, you. Bulk, yeah. bulk SMSing, right? And so the gentleman's agreement was that those types of messages going to Cell C subscribers would go through the Cell C network, paying Cell C the money to deliver those SMSs. Yeah. Cell C have now violated that agreement and saying, no, we'll deliver the SMSs for other mobile network operators. No worries. And so um, this now means that the whole industry will have to look at a way to make sure that the operators get money for those messages being delivered on other people on their networks, even though they're not the ones, you know, they're not billing for those SMSs. So, um, so yeah, that's going to be it's that's going to be interesting. interesting. And so some of the commentators in ind industry said that this will also affect uh, end user SMSs. But Vodacom and MTN hitting back said actually they've misunderstood um, the whole thing, and A2P is completely different from uh, from normal you know consumer SMS services. Cheapest bundle ADSL prices ever in South Africa. 
this is from CyberSmart. Uh, yeah. And again, yeah. who's this? Are they first tier ISP? They do operate their own network. Okay. Yes. Have they got? Have they got enough international bandwidth? Yeah, they've got their own IPC, all that stuff. CyberSmart's been going for a while. They've only got Cape Town IPC, as if I recall correctly. Okay, let's move along. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, Laurie Fjallkov's a good guy. I've met him in person. Um, and it's, gonna be, it's good to see at least competition in the ISP space. That is the one sector where South Africa's telecommunications is really competitive. Yeah, look, he's always good. Just the, the, we, we see, I, f- I swear I see a, an article like yes, this at least he, every I mean, weeks. he did undercut the lowest pricing by a, ve- by a few rand. So, yeah. um, Will he survive? Oh, absolutely. Okay. CyberSmarts are going anywhere. Cool. <laughs> NetBank credit cards rejected by PayPal and Amazon. Okay, that uh, was the joke. Let's move along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm no, sorry. No, no, this really happened. Yes. <laughs> did, you, did you want to say anything more on that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, no, I'm not, I'm not being a stand-up comic. This Is actually this NetBank happened. Visa cards? Yeah, it's their credit cards. Credit cards. They credit cards. Visa uh, MasterCard. Visa MasterCard. Yeah. Yeah. They stopped working. And so... Um, so no, no, they, why look, at the time I read this article which was Monday they were still working on it yes. it had been an entire week so far that it had been done yes we've not heard anything further as far as I know um, if we do hear anything further we'll obviously update you in the next show and is it, it only it, PayPal and Amazon or is there anybody else affected Google also doesn't work oh, no. so, so the Google payment like gateway pretty much everyone in America I saw some tweets today where guys were saying that their cards are now working again okay and cool and they can get their PayPal money okay cool, cool. Cool. So yeah, that's it's good to but get that's to know. Harsh. Yeah, that that was, and it was broken for a week. So it's been broken for a week and a half until today. And I must say, I don't think NetBank lost. A, uh, not, I don't think Amazon lost a lot of money because I'll just use a different credit card. NetBank lost a lot. Sure, sure. Cool. Anyway. Jelly Bean 4.1 now available for the S3. Karat. Oh no, Johan has one here. Johan mm. has the S3. So we're not going to go with our Android guru. We're going to go with Johan, who actually owns one. Yes. Is it great, uh, Johan? How is it? Much better. Yes. Um, Should be fast. You've got I'm Google Now now? My, I'm trying to get my head around Google Now. Google Now is great. Because the one irritation is, it's giving me, you should leave now to be at, on time at work. But it's not taking the route I'm taking. Uh, so yes. there's some <laughs> little bit of intelligence missing in there. It, it did. Uh, but it did tell me tonight that I need to leave now to be in time for the podcast. And were you? Wow. I was, yes. <laughs> it's just a pity that the meeting after the podcast is I'm, still at the old studio. But that's I'm, I'm surprised it learned so quickly. Mine took a couple of weeks to actually... Learn my habits. But I've got a Samsung. But so do it, it, I. It was, no, you don't. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. It was a calendar entry with the location. Uh, it did to... learn very quickly where my new work was, though, yeah, when okay. I switched jobs. It, so, yes, uh, impressed so far. Just, I need to get my head around it because activating it is stupid. And if you want 4.2 shortly, it should be go to Cyanogen. <laughs> <laughs> or switch to Nexus. <laughs> or just download the, uno- the unofficial ROMs, man. I mean, there are ROMs. Okay, <laughs> topic's over. <laughs> ABSA yeah. intros LCD NFC card. All right, this is ABSA trying to grab all the geeks. They've got a LCD and a- NFC card. Um, so there's an LCD on the top right, and you push a button, and basically this is for secure payment online. You know, when it pops out of you don't yeah, need payment. That's, that's if, your two-factor off. Effectively, you've got your FOB built into your card, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this works normally. You just put a password in. So this ac- actually does add extra security. Well, ca- Capitec customers um, do get a FOB. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, they, they actually do have a token or there's a token app for cell phones yeah. um, the coolest thing though about this it's an N- NFC card we finally got NFC yeah, cards which vendors if you have the card somebody might start supporting it so it might be the especially beginning. if it's you know uh, a widely spread bank as like well this is a fairly big bank that's yeah um, that, so that's probably, actually supporting it so well, maybe other banks will, will start apps or machines fair but I mean, you already got the machine with you. Then you can just well use the chip card. Let's mm. use the chip card. As well. Yeah, look, it does take. Even chip and pin took a while for the adoption to come through. Somebody convinced Howtrain. <laughs> Absolutely, they're already oh, using oh, NFC oh, cards. Time is up. <laughs> Pirate Party MEP helps draft new credit card company controls. Um, while on the topic of credit cards, basically, this is the European Union. Um, so MEP stands stands for Member of European Parliament. Possibly. Okay. I think so. Um, and basically, the person, uh, the Pirate Party. Uh, started the, the discussions there to stop credit cards and stuff, uh, excluding people from payments. So this is like WikiLeaks and stuff like that. They now have to be clear reasons that you, you know, for these reasons you may exclude people. And if it doesn't fall on these ones, you may not. So it may not be uh, America doesn't like me and they're going to, I'm doing it because I think this is morally wrong. You, you, it, it's a financial thing and you're basically shoestringing people by stopping this. Mm. And I think this is very good. Yeah, interesting. It's, it's interesting to see the Pirate Party doing what they claim to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and standing for more than, like, free culture. Yes. Cool. So, Mozilla makes a prototype, a prototype of Firefox OS available. True. And so, how does this differ from Chrome OS? Chrome OS is a oh, very... Oh, it doesn't. Cloud, no, it's a very cloud-focused OS. 
Um, so I, this looks an awful lot like Ubuntu for mobiles. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm mischaracterizing that. I haven't really looked very far at it. It was, okay, another OS. Okay, let's talk about it, but meh. Sure. It's another OS and the development languages no, 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 are okay, But we're not saying that Ubuntu, for, uh, what, Ubuntu for Android is another OS. Ubuntu for Android is a different story. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm just checking. Just Ubuntu, checking. Ubuntu for, for Android, Android is not is just another mobile OS. It's a dual boot. Yes, exactly. It's it, a dual no. boot. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what when its intention is. When you dock is. it into like a desktop dock, dock, you get full Ubuntu on it. When it's in mobile mode, you have Android. It can't be dual boot. It's, okay, it's not a dual boot. They're side by side. So they Thank share you. the same kernel. Yes. Multi-boot, whatever you want to call it. What, what, simultaneous boot. Uh, we, uh, we need but you switch between those modes. So in D&D terms, it is kind of like a dual boot. <laughs> it's not a multi-class. It's a dual class. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That brings us to our final topic for the Quick Geek. GIMP got in touch with us. Uh, the GIMP Magazine guys got in touch with us on our YouTube channel. Tim, I think you picked up on uh, this. Yeah, uh, basically said thank you for mentioning issue one. Thanks, Carrot. I know you brought it in. And by the way, issue two is due out the 5th of November. Oh, December. Uh, December, sorry. Uh, and uh, apparently it will be featured in a popular television show. But basically, go get your second... Like uh, Let's Talk Geek. <laughs> yeah, but we're on TVs. We, 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 we've we skipped can that be. level. Yeah, exactly. Smart oh, TVs. Oh, yeah, true. See, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> we love him. <laughs> anyway, the point being that you should go get sign up for the next GIMP magazine at their website. GIMPmagazine.org. Yes. Go check that out. GIMP is awesome. It is. And the, mag is, uh, the, the first edition of the magazine is really cool. So um, I'm hoping that they're just going to build the momentum for that and carry on making awesome stuff. Mm. <gasps> ding, 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 ding. We need a proper sound effect for that. But that's the end of Quick Geek. Thank you for playing. Everybody gets zero. No, I can't say anything because then, then the mixer might no, uh, yeah, deduct you, points from lose. me. Yeah. Wait, wait. I, I vote because of that. Everybody wins except Jan. <laughs> <laughs> now you lose. So okay. if the, it's worth it. the, the mixer must indicate if she is ready with a with a score. Otherwise, we must wait for next week. I think. Um, giving Tim eighty points because he did very well. <laughs> giving Harit eighty points because he did very well. Oh, I see where topic. this is going. Um, <laughs> Johan gets seventy <laughs> because <laughs> plus ten for the awesome goatee. Thank you. And so, 80 points total. And Jan gets 100 points because he did most of the topics, but minus the 50 for the beginning leaves Jan with 50. <laughs> cool. But the points don't matter. We're back. This is Let's Talk Geek, and Johan has something to tell us. He has something to celebrate before we start the main show. Johan, what's going on? Okay, so we've been at this now just over two years. Okay. Next year, February is three. Yeah, so net over two years. And I can, we're proud now say that the Let's Talk Geek has uh, now officially made television debut with cool. the videos that we shot at uh, Rage. Very cool. Uh, it's showing on Channel 319 on DSTV. So here's to our first, all in our T-shirts, Let's Talk Geek crew on the back, titles, everything, interviews from Jan, congratulations, from Tim, uh, uh, Cecilia and... Annie dancing at the <laughs> Miu stand. So that's all there. Princess Leia made the cut. Oh, oh wow. So Lord. she also made the cut. Not, not was surprisingly. <laughs> you, you love Princess Leia. <laughs> oh, I totally... Uh, a girl, one of our uh, female editors was editing the show, so I really didn't think it was going to make it. So I'm very happy about that. And there we go. <laughs> Those watching, there's Princess Leia. So have a good look at that. So yes, uh, it took us two years, but we're on TV. Well cool. Done. Now we just got to do more. Not that, that could have been a light. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Why you <laughs> So everybody have a sip. Congrats, oh, thank guys. You, thank you. Put down the glasses. All the hard work's been there. Yeah. All this stuff. If I it gets lost. Wait to. What do you mean? So we used to have beers during this talk kick. Yeah, I, yeah. I had it before where I used to bring a bottle of wine once, or, once in a while. I think I should bring a bottle of wine next week. Yeah. Well, uh, it means our PG rating has gone to 13 for uh, alcohol. No, as long as we don't swear, we're still fine. Oh, interesting. They just worried about language yeah. and obviously nobody cool. for, for the people nobody watching, that is all. cooling with liquid nitrogen. Oh, yes. That actually, we couldn't stay long enough. That thing awesome. will go to minus one, 150, if I remember right. It we couldn't insane. stay that long. So the video only shows up to minus 101, I think. Yeah, just note the minuses. <laughs> yeah, that, note that that's not a positive number. Yeah, they, they've got arrows drawn at the minus and even that, didn't get my yeah. attention. Yeah, it should have been in. It should have been in luminous, like yellow or something. 
So yeah. Um, I'll pull some more now. 184. What's 184? Oh wow. Know. Was that the was that the Wii U? Oh, yeah, I think apparently it went down to minus 184. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, that could and there we have an interview with a Wii U. Yeah, the, those are the zombie oh, guys. guys. Sorry. Yeah, so it was either way. We we worked the whole day. Um, I and, sh and I what shot you see over three hours worth of footage. <laughs> it all cut down. What <laughs> got cut down to 15 minutes. But uh, we're on TV, guys. And actually, oh, after the final show this for... This is an enormous amount of champagne. Uh, sorry. Cheers, I'll cheers. I forgot you don't drink. Um, cheers. And cheers, I can cheers. say it actually did go out Well done to the mixer, today. too. Cool. It did fly today as well. So Sweet. after the live show I was working on before coming here, I walked out of the oh, studio and walked into the canteen. Oh, there's our show. All right. Very okay. Cool. So Good guys, time. And that right there is the reason I'm buying a Wii U. Zombie U. Congrats, guys. Right. Thank you. Congrats, guys. Cool. With that, into Let's Talk Geek, episode 115. If you're just joining us, we'd, we've just come from a quick geek where we did a rapid fire session through some of the week's top stories in, in geekiness, in geek world, whatever you want to call it, the, the realm of geek, geektopia, nerd fighteria, etc. Uh, so go, go, go check it on the other video on YouTube. Yep, yep. If you're just watching the short one, if you're watching the long show, good on you. Mm, if you're listening cool. to the long show on a long drive, we're with you in spirit. I've done many of those. So, <laughs> so um, I'd like to I'd like to actually focus in on the domain name system and what's happening with the with Zadna in South Africa and the ZA Central Registry. Um, I, I think for for geeks all across the country, it's it's a fairly big deal to have the you know a cent the central registry coming out, Uniform and Zadna partnering when you know they, they used to sort of they, they they at the press event they explained to us they used to sit at opposite tables at events they they were in heavy competition apparently and really didn't talk to one another, and so apparently with the help of guys like Mike Silber and so on, industry heavyweights. Mm. Um, they, they've managed to broker a deal, come together, well, for, for the good, good of good, South Africa's good. domain, for the good of South Africa's domains. Just for name dropping, who's Mike Silver? Why is he not involved? Advisory? So, so he, he's, uh, he's involved in various capacities. Um, so I don't know ex his exact title at Zadna, okay. um, but he's involved at Zadna, along with uh, former head of ISPA, the ISP Association of South Africa, and Brooks. Mm -hmm. He's also involved at Zadna. So there's, there's like a lot of industry heavyweights behind Zadna. Um, and it was, it was cool to catch up with them. I see them very infrequently. Quick question from RSC. Uh, was org.za, which was under IS control, is this also part of this? This is, yeah. So according to the information they supplied us, that, that is now going to form part of the ZA central registry. Absolutely. So I'm not sure what IS's involvement is going to be in the ZA central registry. If they're just going to become a registrar, of the central registry, you know, so in other words, your org the ZA domain can still run through them, but they won't administer it any longer. Yep. It'll go through ZACR. Cool. So uh, as we said in Quick Geek, part of what's happening with ZACR is they're also going to introduce a couple of new domains. Those are web.za and .net.za. Um, they say that one of the discussions that was had was having just .za available. And, um, you know, the, there was a lot of... I would like that. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion around that. Let me actually fire up Evernote to find out exactly the, the head of Zadna explained exactly, uh, you know, or not exactly, but said, you know, they're thinking around it and why they ended up um, not going for that. But, um, yeah, the fact is that they haven't gone for that yet, but the discussion isn't closed. So this isn't... Um, you know, this isn't something that's Zadna has this decreed and is not closed. So they then, said... Then I could get... Huh. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, for example, for those of you who don't know, something I discovered by going onto the Zadna website is that there is a nom.za yeah. domain already available. Oh, nom, nom. So I want to, it's, on, it's available for personal names only, only one re uh, uh, name per person. I totally want to register omnomza. Om.nomza. That's going to be great. Okay, <laughs> now uh, just a general question. So why are they changing? Do it, do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I want it. The registrations aren't open yet. I think so. so um, um, there's a question here. Yeah, uh, I'm sure I can answer, but I'm going to throw it at you. Why are they changing all the domain names? Um, they they're not changing the domain names as far as I know. They're just shifting the the way they they're administered. Yeah, cool. Um, also, and 
all the current domain names will keep on working. Fine. Mm. Now, something that's a little beyond my realm of expertise, and which maybe you hardcore techies that have done this for yonks will be able to shed some light on, is exactly how the domain name system works, what it does, what what kind of <coughs> no, records, what yeah, kind of records said, are I'm available. Not, we can go into details no, no, I'm not going to go into okay. answer your your question because <laughs> that, that's explain a, root um, and then that's fine. okay. Well, I'm, I'm not it, like it, what's very nice about the domain system is one of those systems was actually designed years and years ago, but it's actually stood the test of times and scales incredibly well. Um, and how it generally works is, is you, you you look up to the the root domain. And that will then tell you what the next server down to speak to is. So very simple is when you create a DNS server, your server comes with root entries. Okay. The root entries are set. They, you need to know them. You can't guess those. Mm. And they basically define that .a, that, that root server is behind this IP, and .b and .c and so on. It's not that finite all the way to spelling. There's a lot of gaps in between, but that's the basic rules. So your DNS server, if you are a DNS server, not a DNA caching server or relay server, will look at those root domains for the information. Mm. So without <coughs> DNS, if a, a, I type right, google.com... Right. A relay server will not look at it. Because a relay... That's what I said. Yeah. If, if, except if you're a relay or a caching server, if you're a full-blown DNS server, yeah. you'll look at the. Mm. Now, where this became very mainstream is with the invent of Microsoft Small Business Server with the same amount of headaches. Linux has always done DNSs, but only with the small business server that they really start playing around commercially with uh, root DNSs. Trust me, those things never worked. You were reloading your root roots on a small business server many times, and it took you a while. Where on Linux, generally, you'll just look at your look at your ISP DNS and just keep your life simple. Yeah, I vaguely remember some time Microsoft tried to do to DNS what they did to, with IE. They failed. Yes. No, they, <laughs> Thank they, goodness. They, they, they was a um, just also talk about some of the other things you can do with DNS servers, but also is hosted there. Um, your MX record, which was your mail exchange records, and it basically tells you for that domain, where do you send the mail? Mm. Yeah, was, that was going to be my next question. Um, so does mail work in the same way? All yeah, right. So, so the answer is yes. I'm going to go no, yes, but slightly different because mail exchange records, you can have steps of priority. Yes. Okay. Where with normal DNS entries, you don't have that. Mm. When you go to a website, you've got one address that comes back. So with mail, you've got, yeah, like I said, let's not go <laughs> to geek, okay? <laughs> this is a geek show. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll correct you after okay, you've done you my correction. Correct. Okay, you can do that, all right? So bear in mind, on MX records, mail exchange records, you can have multiple levels. Where the lowest number is hopefully your final point of delivery. Okay. okay. Let's just do, make sure, because mail's got to get there at some stage. So you normally build a couple of relays so that if your path all the way to final point of delivery is not available at that point of time or congested, at least the mail will go to a relay host and work its way all the way yeah. to the server. Yes, web servers. Okay, okay. Uh, just, just continue. So normally if you've got, you'll have a 10, 20, and 30 mail server, it will try the 10 first. If that fails, it'll try the 20 and we'll go to and these the are these are effectively weights of importance. Yes. Or, yes. Okay. So obviously it gets to the 30. Yeah. 30 knows it's 30. Then we'll keep on trying 20 and 10. And if you're a Google Apps user or if you want to use Google's apps, you, this is what you'll have to mess with to get your Google Apps working. You will have yes. to go to your DNS uh, records and point that at Google Change servers yep. to, to make it work. Now, in this, you, you can have multiple entries for an, a name. Uh, same for both... Uh, so let's say for an A record, okay, just difference between a, a record and a C name record. A C name record is an alias. So let's say if I go google.com C name to cnet.com, it means that google.com is a alias for CNET. So when I look it up, it then does a second lookup for CNET. Mm. Right? An A record is will send you directly to an IP. So when I do a lookup for that, when I look up that DNS name, it will actually look up the IP. Okay. Um, but what's the uh, I mean what's the benefit to having a C name rather than an A record at the DNS um, let's say you've got a server central server and it's your mail server your web server your IRC server etc 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 you'll most probably only create one A, a record, record for it and several C name records for doesn't that make the look up longer slightly rather than just making them all A Marginally, records marginally uh, longer so it does do it you'll look up it it's, it's fairly quick but the advantage now is let's say you move servers which happens far more regularly than you changing the things you now change one Entry and they all automatically change. Cool. 
Um, and I, I, I've used this many, many times, and it saved me lots and lots of work. Um, the other records as well that you also get, you also get something called a text record. Now you're getting deep. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, and basically, it's similar to the same, just basically you can then look it up and it gives you a text entry. Um, trying to think of the so other records. I'm blank on some of the others right now. Um, and if you ever use uh, IP over DNS, you're actually using the text records. Um, and just to explain what IP over DNS is, it's a way of running an IP tunnel using the DNS system. And yes, it does work. And it works very well in places that don't give you internet, but still let you do DNS lookups. Mm -hmm. Comment from the IRC from Safaron. If you are moving a mail server, add both your old and new mail servers. New servers with low priority, wait 12 hours for it to propagate. And when you want to swap servers, just change the priorities. That way the switch happens in minutes instead of hours. Yeah. So some, some interesting tricks that you can play with, okay, with yes, DNS so out there. Uh, Marchant also asked a question around um, hello.co.za has an IP of 192.168.1.1 so you can access it with the IP and the host name. Be careful when you're talking about web servers. Um, web servers, typically you're running more than one website on the same server. Mm. So if you're going to hit that web server with an IP address, the web server is going to give you the default website. That's why you do a DNS query because then the client tells the web server I'm looking for whichever. It's called mm. virtual hosting on the same website. Because when you start playing with websites, you don't you don't spin up a new server for every website you do because you're going to run out of IPs. And S servers. And <laughs> servers. <laughs> no, you can run. Oh, yeah, yeah you bind. Could, yeah. You can bind. But, but just, just bear that in mind that... Uh, okay, something else that was mentioned <laughs> there, sorry, was the host entry. Um, in PCs, there's something called the host entry, and it used to be the original method that they used to do lookups with names. Unfortunately, as you can imagine, if you had a flat file that you had to look up all the domain names on the internet, it would get really big really quickly and fall over. Um, so that's when they, they did it. But the, the original ent idea of the host file still exists, and you can put overrides or specific entries just for yourself in there. Um, and when you do a lookup, it's very important to remember, it does a host lookup first, gen not always, generally, and Default, the, yeah. then it does a DNS lookup. Um, and the, the reason for this is if you've added something in the host entry and then you're looking at the DNS, it's not resolving. Even if you've tested your DNS, it's all working perfect, perfectly. Look at your host entry because <laughs> you, you, you've stuffed yourself up. And yes, I have done that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I want to move us to our Q&A because this was a question that was asked not at this year's um, ISPA, but because we, we couldn't go. But last year's iWeek. Sorry, not ISPA, uh, the ISPA week, conference. Yeah. Um, iWeek. And uh, that's, you know, can we now do proper who is lookups on .zero domains. And so uh, okay, well, well. they just, just define what, that. what is who is. Yeah, exactly. So, so who is, uh, I th in, in the context, I think, in which the question was asked was loading up a terminal window, either in Mac OS or, or, or Linux. Why does it have to be a terminal? Um, because this, this is now where, where the thing breaks. To go who is something oh. dot, you know, let's talk geek dot zero zero. What is who is. Okay, so who is is what you do to, uh, to look up information associated with a domain, who it's registered to, and importantly, what its name servers are. So, um, so its name servers you know, are, are also registered to, to the domain. No, you don't use who is to, you know, you know when, when, you, when you're looking up a domain, you don't use who is to look up the name servers as far as I know, but you know, the name servers are part of the registration information of that domain, and you can query that with who is. And so what... South Africans, uh, you know, wanted to be able to do because right now the 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 most well known way of querying .dot zero zero way of doing is it. doing it via the web. Okay, in fact, it's not the only way, but it's it, the other stuff is well hidden, and uh, I think the Ubuntu who is might you know work well. It, it goes to a central registry um, of who is servers that's administered by an old South African called Rodney Joffe, I think. And uh, he keeps a, a record of, of all the Whois servers around the world. And so the one he points to will return to you if the domain is registered and then give you a link to the whois.co.za CGI script that you know, does the lookup for you anyway. But if you whois.com, you get all the information right back in your terminal window. So that's where the question comes from. You know, how can we get all the Whois information 
in our terminal window like you do for a normal.com or, or anywhere why else. Why would they want to do that? I mean, why can't they just go to the form, fill it in and go submit and there you go, you get the information? Because I'm in a terminal and well, if you're on a text-only box... Answer. There are several reasons. So, okay. So first of all, it, it, it provides a standard method and effectively an API that you can use to call these things. It uses the standard in PHP scripting, I'm sure in Python, all the rest date, of it. There's who is methods. ISPs could not easily sell domains on a website for .co.za because they couldn't do a who is Upload. So they could write all the code to do the transaction, submit, register, do the DNS, everything, but they couldn't physically check if the <laughs> domain has already been registered. So, so now what's interesting is there seems to be two types of who is services offered on .coza, none of which have made their way really into the core who is apps. So especially not on Mac OS. So Mac OS, if you type who is let's talk it actually throws an error. It tells you, well, I don't know how to look this up. Um, so sorry for you. Um, and so apparently the thing that you've got to do there is go who is minus H, specify the who is server. And that's the tricky bit is that a lot of folks don't know what that server is. So the information is out there. It's on the My Broadband forums if you look hard enough. And so the, the one that's most used uh, seems to be one really aimed at high volumes. It'll tell you whether the, the domain is registered and then give you a link to the further information. So that's it. And so if you're somebody who just wants to query domain availability, that's a, that's a neat way to do it because it comes back with a, with a simple, you know, available, regist or registered. That's it. And so um, in, the, in the thing that we've got in our show notes, if you're looking at the, at the video, um, it, that'll show you uh, how to do the query. And if you're listening to the audio, I'm going to read it out to you. So you'll just have to make a note or, or look at the show notes later. The, the one uh, way to do this is to go to whois.coza.net.za in your minus H flag, and that'll just give you available or registered. Then you can also go to whois.registry.net.za, and that'll give you everything. So, how to do a terminal whois lookup cool. for .coza domains. Just give me that one again. Who is dot registry dot net dot za uh, which bit you want registry dot net dot net dot za dot za dot net dot za sorry I just want to cool um, and with that we are running out of time so we're going to end it there but please if you have any other questions you want to know more about this send us your questions and we will do a specific show just around that question mm. Cool. Thank you for watching. Let's talk geek. Up next is what geekery is this? Do stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Let's Talk Geek episode 115, and we are going to talk about what geekery is this. First up, 100,000 stars. This is awesome. This it is, is awesome. so cool. Okay, um, what is this? Basically, you know, you've got the Chrome experiments where they keep on re releasing very cool things that are showcasing all the features of the, of the new browsers. Um, I don't know if Carrot wants to talk about this. As mm. But anyway, okay. So this one here, uh, I'm not sure what, they, what they're what they using, but basically it gives you the solar system down to our... So you start off at our star and you can like, just zoom out and zoom out and zoom out till eventually you're looking at the Milky Way. And this is fully... We can rotate it and up and down and zoom in uh, all inside your browser and scarily fast. This is just... Wow. You know, a couple of years ago, somebody told so me you could do this. You've got to say, all, in your, all inside your... Chrome browser. Or inside your Chrome browser. No, this Does should, it only this work in Chrome? What, no, it this work should in work in other browsers. Work other WebKit browsers, at least. Yeah, it should work in It should work in, it should work in yeah. other standard compliant browsers. It, look, it depends on what... It's a Chrome experiment. W sure, which is but I'm guessing to this is designed to show off some HTML5. Yeah. If, if so anybody's interested in seeing what it's doing to the mixing PC, oh dear. Um, that is our CPU usage, which... Red is bad. <laughs> when I try to open the app. The, having said that, the CPU was bad beforehand. Look, I've done this on my Mac, <laughs> and it hardly uses any... It uses lots of RAM, though. That's, that's one thing we have yeah. worked out. Well, that's browsers use lots of RAM. Yeah. Chrome uses uh, <laughs> lots now, of RAM. Chrome, yeah, Chrome Experience isn't designed to only work in Chrome. It's designed that. Okay. to showcase features yeah. or fancy it, features But it's, it's, it's all got to do with which HTML5 standards the browser implements at any mm. given time. I mean, all the browsers are at different levels. Yeah. Or, or not levels, but have implemented different parts of the spec. Mm. So, yeah, certain stuff will work in Chrome that might not work elsewhere. So, like, one of the questions with this was, I'm not sure that they're not using the new OpenGL stuff or WebGL uh, because it is working on Mac, but I know a lot of Linux doesn't have the WebGL unless you do lots and lots of work in the back end to make it work. Um, so it would be interesting for somebody else to test it. I must say I haven't looked at the underlying code, but it's it's amazing. Uh, just I think this is 
So it shows you what you can do. Now, couldn't you play a game like this? Hey, come on, imagine this, the spaceship going in. I still remember stock, uh, what? Star control? Star control. There you are. <laughs> Homeworld. There we are. Found it. Yeah. Soul system, everyone. Third planet from the sun. Yeah. Are we going to call it soul system? That, that's what some sci-fi call it. It is the soul system. Okay. <laughs> is it just soul called? is our sun. Okay, no, cool. Just checking. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Next up is something that... What do you mean next up? I'm not leaving. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just All right, just back to the watch this for the rest of the show. Once the mixer is decreed, we may move on. Uh, one thing was it even gives you the color. The color profiles actually mean uh, I think it's the dense, uh, the heat of the star, or something like that. I can't remember what it is, but it, it, it th those colors mean something. Go, go, go check the app and find out what. To me, those <laughs> colors mean pretty light. Mm, look at all. Mm, the, look at all the. Um, I think the thing. Whoa! What is this? So, yes, Johanna's jumping the gun. <laughs> and I didn't say anything. <laughs> and, I'm asking, what is and, this? And is looking at the Trello website. So, that's the next thing under what geekery is this, is Trello is actually a fairly awesome thing that I was recently made aware of this week. And that was a very poorly constructed sentence, and I apologize. But Trello in itself is essentially like a list of lists, I guess, is, is a way to, to put it. And the philosophy behind it is actually quite interesting. Um, uh, I, read a, I read a blog post by uh, the, one of the head honchos behind Trello. And he says that his company started off building specialist software first. And to make a long story short, if you're a fledgling startup, you should do that before you start building software for everybody. Because that's, that's harder to market and, and mm. get the word out and stuff. And he said that one of the most interesting things that, oh, that, that he's come across in his career as a software developer is reading about, you know, Excel and what the Excel developers discovered about their users. And they found that while Excel was designed to be, you know, a number cruncher, something that lets you, you know, run the numbers by changing little variables here and there, right, what people say. were mostly using it for was tables, generating tables quickly. Um, they were using it for that. They, you, yeah, I've used it for that. In fact, I use it to generate HTML tables <laughs> with scripting. Right, so um, it's it's a quick and easy way. And if I need to do calculations to calculate average prices, boom. Quick hint: if you create an HTML table and open an Excel, it opens up perfectly as a normal Excel table. Yeah, but try to get it back out of Excel. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> all that Microsoft. Uh, markup it uh, yeah. slaps in it just frustrates me. Anyway, um, the, so so he said. Basically, what Excel was was just a data structure visualized. And that you found that competing products that were great spreadsheets, better spreadsheets than Excel, better at numbers than Excel, failed because they weren't just the table that Excel was and what most of the people were using Excel for. And so the, he, he decided, well, the next, you know, if he's going to build a killer app, it has to be a data structure. And so this sort of list organizing and list of lists data structure um, is, you know, said that, you know, it's not that it's a new concept, but nobody's done it particularly well. And so they went out to do a great list of Can lists. Can I ask the question? Ask what do the you question. use it for? So anything you want. So the... Yeah, but that's... I use this phone for anything yeah, I so, want. So what, is, what, what they aimed it at uh, or... What the website indicates is that it's for, for company use and stuff, right? But he said that the app is actually aimed at being, a, I think they called it a horizontal app. Um, everybody can use it for whatever. So, you know, they've got the classic you know, recipe ideas, blah, blah, blah in here. But um, another thing they've got in here is a shot list thing. And so you've got a list of shots that you need to make. You've got a list of shots that you have made. You've got a list of shots that, you know, haven't been, uh, that, haven't, that have been wrapped and... So, as a, as a video creator, that can be a great way to just keep track of your shot list and the various states that shots are in. So, it can be a state machine is one way to use it to, to keep personal track of, of the state of a given task uh, rather than firing up something massive like Microsoft Project. You've got a very straightforward way of just managing a particular task. Um, or it can just be a way to manage your day. Um, so, yeah, whatever you could possibly need a list of lists for. Cool. So it's interesting. I'm going to start. I'm going to give it a whirl to see if it'll help like me organize me better. Of, is Basecamp? I don't know if anybody's looked at that. Uh, I've heard of it, like but I haven't checked it out. Management. Yeah, it's sort of a simplified. 
I want to say it's it's based for tracking projects, but it's also quite simplified. So you, you can create tabs and put tasks and task people with things and all the rest of it, but very horribly simplified. And I, would, I want to say it's sort of simplified bug tracking for, for people who are lazy. <laughs> but it works. It actually does work very well. Check yeah. it out. Yeah. So simple bug tracking for developers. Sorry. What application was that? Base Camp. Base Camp. Yeah. Look, unfortunately, it's paid for, so you get the first month free, um, and then you, you go afterwards, but it's, it's reasonably cheap, and I know we're using it to track one of our projects now with an external developer, uh, and it actually is working. So he posts his stuff back there, and we put the tasks in there, and what's quite nice is you can drag, you can create like headings and then drag the tasks between the headings and also then order your headings. So like we'll have urgent bugs, bugs, feature request, feature free, and then you can drag like a feature to urgent feature and all the rest of it and also order, you know, urgent bugs above bugs, but you can change your mind at any point. So it's, it, what I like about it is a very quite free form of this. So, that, you know, um, but I would say if you look, if you're managing a very large project with huge amounts of bugs, it wouldn't be they your really best project. really need project. to change this chick on their first, on their homepage. <laughs> with that, Sorry, I would you... swiftly like to move us wow. into the weekly Kickstarter. There, there cannot be a Let's Talk Geek episode. <laughs> Do with, I need to say uh, more? <laughs> we are swiftly moving along, Johan. You are <laughs> swiftly moving along. <laughs> yes, we have to have an episode with a Kickstarter. Again, completely unintentional. And I have to stop looking it's at awesome. Kickstarter because it's just taking all of my money. <laughs> I keep throwing money at the screen and things happen. Yeah, yeah. Th that, uh, that Wing Commander game funded this week and the money went off my credit card. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I funded that? <laughs> cool. Yeah, I hate it. It's been happening too often recently. <laughs> so the one for this week... Uh, that I can't remember how I stumbled upon this, but I did. It's called Slope, and it is a tablet stand, a stand for your tablet. And what makes this one so cool... Why don't they call it stand? Because it's a slope. Because it's, it slopes. I, I don't know. Ask the creator. Because Apple has marketed... Slope sounds more elegant stand than stand. And they would get sued. <laughs> Well, somebody's patented it uh, or trademarked it Maybe. in this case. So what makes this one so cool is it's really a simple shape. It is a, a, slope. A, a slope and that's it. And on the top side where you put the tablet, it has sticky stuff, but it's not sticky. So it's, um, what did I call it? It's effective. Microporous. Yes. So it, it's kind of like a... a suction. Suc yes. Suction, but porous, spongy type thing. Like a suction cup. Yes. Okay. Except lots of them. Okay. Lots of mini ones. So... You should watch the video. It's really cool. You just click your tablet onto it. Except it's it not actually, click. It's not click, but it sounds like a click. It makes a really cool click sound when you, when you suck your tablet onto the stand. And that's it. So now my, it's on the stand. My tablet is not standing on something. It's not standing. It looks like it's floating in the air with like... It, it looks like an iMac stand. It looks like a cinema display. Yeah, that, that comes out of it, which is kind of cool because let's face it, the iMac has one of the coolest stands. <laughs> um... And that's the thing that makes it cool. On the top where your tablet goes is that, and on the bottom where it sticks to a table or a windscreen, yes, they have a picture of the guy sticking it on a windscreen. It has another one of those pads and sticks it to a table, stick your tablet on it, and that's it. Your tablet is on the stand. Nice. I would like to say for the, there's a lot of Mac and Apple hatred in the IRC, so I would just like to point out, yes, the cinema display's price isn't very nice. No. And uh, even though it's design and the, the iMac's design is very nice, yes, you can get a cheaper monitor. Uh, and we, I was actually on Landmark PC lately to, to give them a, a, you know, like a random plug, free advertising, oh my word. <laughs> um, so they've got a Dell monitor, I think, yep. um, the U, U. For, for just over six grand, the exact same resolution, 27 inch as an iMac or a cinema display, two five four, you know, by, by monstrous, by 1600, um, six grand. 1400. By, yeah. And the next closest is 10 grand. For a monitor of that you, resolution, you can actually get that monitor cheaper because I was looking at the ones you sent there for apparently. But you've got to, there's like a cheaper go to Anantec and search for that. You will put it in the show notes. Um, there, there's another model, it doesn't have all the features. It's not apparently the control software is not as good as the Dell. Apparently, the Dell is much better build quality and all the rest, but it uses the same display as the Dell. And you can get it in this country for four grand. Ooh, I somebody, might buy that. Somebody was asking if this thing will stick to the Apple logo. Uh, well, well, the Apple logo is in the middle of the Apple yes. tablet. And so if if you're busy watching the video stream, uh, the, the one that he demos mostly on is an iPad. He uses it with an iPad 1 and I think an iPad 3. And then he also demos on a Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Uh, 
and they have some pictures down below. It's not part of the video of the Nexus 7. So it sticks onto all of those tablets. There, there are two models, one for 7 and one for 10-inch. So I'm assuming the 10-inch one is just kind of bigger. A little bigger, yeah. yeah. If I wasn't uh, so skittish about South African shipping, I would totally get one of these things. Yeah, they, they do say add a little bit extra for international shipping. So that's in there. I'm not sure how they're going to be shipping it, but I'll request, if it does go through, I'll request that they ship it to me via FedEx or, or something. Yeah, or a courier or something. A courier. Yes. Uh, we've had some bad experiences there. But yes, they're looking for $60,000 and they're almost at 20 with about 28 days to go. It looks really cool. Uh, go check it out. Very nice. Brilliant. With that, it's time for our kicker. And Kick Jan. This kicker is an artist who creates real clouds indoors. So this is pretty cool. I don't know uh, if you... you found this one Tim no, no, this I have no, no idea who put this in the show notes. I actually did um, and now I'm trying to remember exactly how he did this as far as I he controlled the he temperature, controls the humidity temperature and humidity in the inside the room and they he can do this in pretty much any room um, controls it for a short period and then he, act, he takes photos of the clouds that he creates in the room and it's really awesome to see a cloud in the middle of the room uh, so the, the photos that they show there is pretty much a completely empty room with a cloud in it. And you look at it and go, that's shopped. It has to be shopped. And uh, by the way, uh, while we're talking about shopping, I can never trust a photo ever again. Thanks no, to Content to Wear Full. Yes. So, yes. So, thanks to? Content to Wear Full. It's a feature in Photoshop that is, was actually in GIMP first called Resynthesizer that lets you remove things from photos and it looks like it was never there. Well, he's putting things in. Well, in this case, yeah, he's doing the opposite. He's putting things in, except... This, Unless the whole room was cloud. It's really there. <laughs> There's really a cloud in the room. And that is cool. That's awesome. I don't... Uh, maybe I'm just too much of an engineer. I don't see the art the, yeah, in it, but I see the awesomeness in it. I mean, it's a cloud. Yes. Clouds are cool. Clouds are cool. <clears throat> Especially in tech. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yes. I had to make the joke. No, there's just, your cloud. In a, you see, that is what the cloud really means. When people say it's in the cloud, that's where the it's cloud is. It's in a random building that. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So, by the way, this is a call to arms for all techies. We've now got the world saying cloud. Next job, get everyone to say the cylinder when talking about databases. <laughs> I think it's time, everyone. It is time. The cylinder. That is Jan's call to arms. <laughs> <laughs> with that thank you very much for joining us uh, and thank you for watching the show check out our other shows we'll be back next week and uh, like us on Facebook check us out on Twitter and uh, what's that? circle us in Google Plus and everywhere else that you can indeed so well, we've got a bunch of other shows on the uh, Let LT Star Let's, Let's Talk Network Network yes <laughs> yes. <laughs> on the Let's Talk Network I should have just made that go down instead of up such as Let's Talk Possibility on Mondays. We've got Let's Talk Afrikaans once a month, I believe. It should be next week Thursday. Not confirmed yet, but we hope so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, if the show goes out before next week Thursday, you will be warned to watch Let's Talk Afrikaans if you're an Afrikaans speaker or otherwise like to hear the divine language spoken at you. With that, I'd like to thank my co-hosts, Gareth Vermeulen. Thank you very much. Where can people find pleasure. you? About.me slash hockey ZA. Check it out. Tim Hawk. Uh, not really, yeah, on Let's Talk Geek. Brilliant. Yes, you spend all your time and energy here or on GreatSignal. Yes, which should hopefully have some new updates shortly. We've got a new app that should be released next week. And Teasers, teasers. I have stats and other cool features should be arriving also hopefully by that time. Great stuff. Johan Els, where can people find you? www.wu-els.co.za Great stuff. Have you been updating your blog, sir? Uh, it's now more a website than a blog, but there's been a lot of updates. I've been busy. Uh, done a couple of shows. I actually did a very interesting uh, church service on Sunday for the 100th anniversary of South African Defence Force in South Africa. Okay. At the church service. I actually did that for them on, sa on Sunday past. So, it's a lot of things happening, small things. Cool. Nothing major. Cool. I'm Jan Vermeulen, and I spend most of my online time at my broadband at Zere. You can also find me on Twitter at Jan V. He's the staff writer. Yes, sometimes I'm the staff writer. <laughs> sometimes. I've, de I've decided to downplay because people actually, like, I get blamed for everything staff writer does now. But we know it's blame Jan. <laughs> okay, yes. If blame you found the Twitter one, find it. Yeah, I'm also on Twitter at blame Jan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's getting... All the follows. <laughs> My bag. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Yeah. Thank you very much. Tune in next week, and we'll catch you on the geek side. No, we need a better sign-off than that, but thanks for watching. Cheers. Ha, 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 I like that name. Tuttle, you can now get your .za domain amid <laughs> Ice. No, I'm going to have to mute you now when I do the edit. Sorry. <laughs> it's really not that difficult.